Well, what I do know is that the White House never wanted to have the way the case was made, uh, the way the intelligence was used to sell the war to the American people looked into or investigated uh, by Congress. This was delayed for quite some time. Uh, and finally, Chairman uh, Rockefeller, Senator Rockefeller, pushed this forward to get to the truth. Um, and, you know, the, the White House can continue to bury their heads in the sands, but the reality is still the same. And I think the American people see it for exactly what it is. Uh, the, the Senate Intelligence Committee closely tracks exactly what I write about in my book, we came to the very same conclusion that the intelligence was used in a way that made the threat sound more grave and more urgent and more serious than it was. And when you go to war, an issue as serious as war, the American people need openness and candor, and that was absent from this administration in the buildup to the war. Scott, let me put two things together. The Intelligence Committee report, uh, very powerful in those respects, as you described. And what you said the last time you were here with us on the 29th of May, this was about Saddam's supposed nuclear ambitions. And you said the intelligence was packaged together in a way to make it sound more ominous and more grave and more urgent than it really was. I don't think that this was some deliberate, conscious effort to go and mislead American people. If the purpose of the repackaging the intelligence was not a deliberate effort to mislead the American people into supporting that war, what do you think it was? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what I talk about in my book is I think that they got caught up in this permanent campaign culture and everybody was focused on how do we make the strongest case. And you don't make the strongest case by talking about the caveats and contradictions uh, and uh, intelligence that contradicts uh, what you're saying. Uh, you know, there, there's, we can get into this argument of whether or not it was deliberate or not. Uh, the result is uh, it was very troubling uh, that we went into war uh, in a less than open and candid way. And the consequences are playing out before us right now. So in, in some ways, it's problematic in its own right whether or not it was deliberate or not. Uh, but I think that the intention there by some of these people, may, it may have been well-intentioned, uh, but they lost sight of what's most needed during a time of the war-making process, which is to speak the truth to the American people, make sure that they understand the consequences, the realities, and the truths as best we know them, what the threat is and how serious it is before we make that decision to go into war. This book tour must be a an eye-opener. When, when the interview views have not been sympathetic, and I don't want to go into details about it, but did, did it strike you when you encountered interviewers who were not, um, not either, either wanted to continue to believe the administration's point of view, or, or they think you've been programmed by the left or administration critics, or they have other explanations other than that you're telling the truth and you felt like you needed to do so? Have you, have you been sort of startled by these people? I mean, you mentioned the White House and their heads in the sands. Does it seem to you there are a lot of people out there whose heads are still in the sands about all this? Well, I, I think I think that is the case. I, th I think that some people would rather we not talk about how the intelligence was used. They would just simply like to say it, the intelligence was wrong, but they were they were basing it on the intelligence, and that's not entirely accurate, as we now see from the Senate Intelligence Committee and the report that they put forward. 